Hello and welcome dear students. Today we are going to discuss an important topic that is energy efficiencies in an ecosystem. The main objectives of this lecture are energy and its types, general principles of energy for ecosystem, energy and structure of ecosystem, consumption efficiency and energy flow models. First of all, let us define the term energy. Energy can be defined as the capacity to do work, whether that work be on a gross scale as raising mountains and moving air masses over continents, or on a small scale such as transmitting a nerve impulse from one cell to another. Now, the kinds of the energy, there are two kinds of energy, potential and kinetic. They can be explained as potential energy is energy at rest, it is capable and available for work and kinetic energy is due to motion and results in work, work that results from the expenditure of energy can be of two kinds. One, it can store energy as potential energy. Second, it can order matter without storing energy. Now, the laws of thermodynamics. The expenditure and storage of energy is described by two laws of thermodynamics. First law, law of conservation of energy. The law of conservation of energy states that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It may change forms, pass from one place to another or act upon matter in various ways. In this process, no gain or loss in total energy occurs. Energy is simply transferred from one form or place to another. Second law, law of decrease in energy. The second law of thermodynamics states that on the transformation of from one kind to another, there is an increase in entropy and a decrease in the amount of useful energy. In this way, when coal is burned in a boiler to produce steam, some of the energy creates steam that performs work, but part of the energy is dispersed as heat to the surrounding air. Now, the sources of the energy, three sources of energy account for all the work of the ecosystem. These sources are gravitation, internal forces within the earth and solar radiation. The solar radiation is significant for ecosystem. The solar radiation which originates from sun is the source of energy for life and is what sets the ecosystem besides other natural system. Now, energy flow through ecosystem. All living things require energy in one form or another. Energy is required by most complex metabolic pathways often in the form of adenosine triphosphate, especially those responsible for building large molecules from smaller compounds. And life itself is an energy driven process. Living organisms would not be able to assemble macromolecules that is proteins, lipids, nucleic acids and complex carbohydrates from their monomeric subunits without a constant energy input. It is important to understand how organisms acquire energy and how that energy is passed from one organism to another through food webs 
and their constituent food chains. Food webs illustrate how energy flows directionally through ecosystems, including how efficiently organisms acquire it, use it, and how much remains for use by other organisms of the food web. How organisms acquire energy in a food web? Energy is acquired by living things in three ways. Photosynthesis, chemosynthesis and the consumption and digestion of other living or previously living organisms by heterotrophs. Photosynthetic and chemosynthetic organisms are both grouped into category known as autotrophs. That is organisms capable of synthesizing their own food, more specifically capable of using inorganic carbon as a carbon source. Photosynthetic autotrophs that is photoautotrophs use sunlight as an energy source whereas chemosynthetic autotrophs that is chemoautotrophs use inorganic molecules as an energy source. Autotrophs are critical for all ecosystems. Without these organisms, energy would not be available to other living organisms and life itself would not be possible. Photoautotrophs such as plants, algae and photosynthetic bacteria serve as the energy source for a majority of the world's ecosystems. These ecosystems are often described by grazing food webs. Photoautotrophs harness the solar energy of the sun by converting it to chemical energy in the form of ATP and NADP. The energy stored in ATP is used to synthesize complex organic molecules such as glucose. Chemoautotrophs are primarily bacteria that are found in rare ecosystems where sunlight is not available such as in those associated with dark caves or hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean. Many chemoautotrophs in hydrothermal vents use hydrogen sulphide which is released from the vents as a source of chemical energy. This allows chemoautotrophs to synthesize complex organic molecules such as glucose for their own energy and in turn supplies energy to the rest of the ecosystem. Now the energy and the structure of the ecosystem. Ecosystems nor their component species can exist without a constant supply of energy to maintain the biotic structures and their functions. The source of this energy is in almost all cases the sun. The sun runs the energy, carbon and nitrogen fixation of green plants. Less obviously, the sun does many other things for ecosystems. Most important, it evaporates and lifts water from the ocean and delivers it to land ecosystems, replenishes carbon dioxide and other gases through winds pumps water and associated minerals from the roots to the leaves through transpiration, provides nutrients through weathering and so on. Now let us discuss the tropic processes in detail. The pathway of energy conversion and transfer that is the eating of one organism by another goes from the initial capture of solar energy by autotrophs to the herbivores that eat plants to the first level carnivores that eat herbivores on to the top carnivores. The principal pathways within a food chain can be represented as energy transfer through a series of steps. The world is covered with living creatures and these creatures are continuously dying. Yet 
the world is not littered with carcasses, so obviously they disappear in some way. We call this process decomposition and it is mediated principally by single celled organisms especially bacteria and fungi. In addition, the decomposition process gets a start initially by larger animals from buzzards to maggots to protozoans and in earlier days even our own ancestors. Although humans are often disgusted by decomposition and in fact have probably been selected for this quality. Without decomposition the biological world would come to a stop as all of the earth's available materials would be tied up in various carcasses. An early example of a food chain from Wells et al. 1939, in this case the energy is represented as flowing from bottom to top with the later convention of energy flowing from left to right. Now let us discuss tropic dynamics and biomass pyramids. The energy captured by green plants progressively less and less flows to the next consumer or as it is often called tropic level. When the rate of flow of energy is graphed, it nearly always will look like a pyramid with the large base representing the energy captured by the autotrophs and each successive layer representing higher tropic levels. Each further removed from the base, this is called the pyramid of energy. Biomass plotted by tropic level may look like this, but often looks more like a square than a pyramid. The reason is that larger organisms often found in higher tropic levels generally respire that is use up energy more slowly. In a sense they get less energy but they hold on to what they do get for a longer time. So in the ocean there is roughly the same biomass of algae, zooplankton, small fish, large fish and even whales. The reason is that the small algae turn over much faster meaning that they have a much higher rate of metabolism and loss to other organisms that eat them. Ecosystems and their component organisms use this energy to rearrange the chemical molecules of the earth's surface and of the atmosphere into living tissue according to those patterns that have high survival potential. They are in this context anti-entropic that is ecosystems and life in general work against the tendency for the molecules of the world to degrade into relatively random arrangements. The proper functioning of the earth's ecosystems is also essential for human beings. For atmospheric and climatic stability, for the production of food fiber and clean water and for physical and psychological well-being. Now the consumption efficiency. The consumption efficiency defines the amount of available energy produced by any given tropic level that is consumed by the next higher level. Values of consumption efficiency for the various consumer tropic levels therefore determine the pathway of energy flow through the food chain, providing a basis for comparison of energy flow through different ecosystems. In terrestrial ecosystems, distinct differences in consumption efficiency and energy flow exist between forests and grassland ecosystems. Predators inhabiting forests had a value of 89.9 percent, whereas predators inhabiting grassland ecosystems had an average value of 77 percent. Patterns of energy flow through 
flowing water ecosystems that is streams and rivers differ markedly from both terrestrial and standing water ecosystems that is lakes and oceans. The detrital food chain dominates and depends on inputs of dead organic matter from adjacent terrestrial ecosystems. General patterns of energy flow through four ecosystems, forests, terrestrial ecosystem, ocean, phytoplankton community and stream. Now, let us discuss about energy flow models. Due to unidirectional flow of energy, the behavior of energy in ecosystem is called energy flow. From the energetics point of view, energy flow is explained as 1. The efficiency of the producers in absorption and conversion of solar energy. 2. The use of the above said converted chemical form of energy by the consumers. Third the total input of energy in form of food and its efficiency of assimilation. 4. The loss caused through respiration, heat, excretion, etc. 5. The gross net production and the model for energy flow single channel energy model that is Lindman 1942 was the first to propose the community energetics approach or the tropic dynamic model to ecology, which enables an investigator to compare the relative rates at which different kinds concerning energy flow through forest ecosystems by the application of this kind of approach. For example, by comparing ratios of leaf fall to litter decomposition on the forest floor, his conclusion was that the rates of leaf production are higher and those of litter accumulation lower in the tropics than at higher latitudes. Number 1. There is no way street along which energy moves, that is unidirectional flow of energy. Within this, the energy that is captured by the autotrophs does not revert back to solar inputs and the energy which passes does not pass back to the autotrophs. It moves progressively through the various tropic levels. As such, it is no longer available to the previous level. Since there is one way flow of energy, the system would collapse in case the primary source, the sun, we are cut off. Secondly, progressive decrease in energy level is seen at each tropic level. This decrease is accounted first by the energy dissipated as heat in metabolic activities, second, measured here as respiration coupled with unutilized energy that is shown in figure energy flow diagram. This is a simplified energy flow diagram. The diagram depicts three tropic levels that is boxes numbered 1, 2, 3 in a linear food chain exhibit these. Second, L shows total energy input that is 3000. Third, LA shows light absorbed by plant cover. 1500, 4, PG shows gross primary production, 5, A shows total assimilation, 6, PN shows net primary production, 7, P shows in secondary consumer production, 8, NU shows energy not used that is stored or exported, 9, NA shows energy not assimilated by consumers that is ingested. 10 or shows respiration, some more elucidation of the figure is. The boxes represent the tropic levels, the pipes depict the energy flow in and out of each level. Now let us discuss the Y-shaped energy flow model, two channel energy flow model. Following the example of Lindman, 
Several authors described energy flow models for different kinds of ecosystems. Two illustrations are first Thiel 1957 prepared an energy flow diagram of root spring in USA. Second, H. T. Odom 1957 prepared energy flow model for silver springs, Florida, USA. Third, 30,810 kilocalories per meter square per year remained for net production. In model given by Thiel 1957 for root springs, most of the energy rich material eaten by heterotrophs entered the systems as plant debris. On the other hand, in the model given by H. T. Odom 1957 for silver spring, most of the heterotrophs food in food chain was produced by green. Within some systems, heterotrophs consume living plants, while in others they feed on dead plant parts, that is detritus. Number one, in root springs, the chain began with dead plant parts. Second, in silver springs, the chain began with live plant parts. On the basis of the studies, E. P. Odom pointed out that in nature there are present two basic food chains in an ecosystem. Number one, the grazing food chain beginning with green plant base going to herbivores and then to carnivores. And second, the detritus food chain beginning with dead organic matter acted by microbes, then passing to detrivers and their consumers, that is predators. The figure given present one of the first published energy flow models as pioneered by H. T. Odom in 1956. The figure illustrates energy flow in a community with a large import and smaller export of organic matter, where P indicates gross primary production, P n indicates net primary production, P 2 to P 5 indicates secondary production at the shown levels. Gross primary production that is equal to total photosynthetic carbon fixation, autotrophic respiration, RA GPP minus NPP, net primary production NPP minus RA heterotrophic respiration, RH that is respiration of consumers and decomposers, ecosystem production that is NEP equivalent to GPP minus RE. The three major steps in energy flow corresponds to exploitation efficiency, assimilation ef efficiency, net production efficiency. Now, let us discuss the productivity within tropic levels. Productivity within an ecosystem can be defined as the percentage of energy entering the ecosystem incorporated into biomass in a particular tropic level. Biomass is the total mass in a unit area at the time of measurement of living or previously living organism within a tropic level. Ecosystems have characteristic amounts of biomass at each tropic level. The productivity of the primary producers is especially important in an ecosystem because these organisms bring energy to other living organisms by photoautotrophy or chemoautotrophy. The rate at which photosynthetic primary producers incorporate energy from the sun is called gross primary productivity. All organisms need to use some of this energy for their own functions like respiration and resulting metabolic heat loss. Scientists often refer to the net primary productivity of an ecosystem. Net primary productivity is the energy that remains in the primary producers after accounting for the organisms respiration and heat loss. Now, the ecological efficiency, the transfer of energy between tropic levels. Large amounts of energy are lost from the ecosystem from one tropic level to the next tropic level as energy flows from the primary producers through the various tropic levels of consumers and decomposers. The main reason for this loss is the second law of thermodynamics, which states that 
whenever energy is converted from one form to another, there is a tendency toward disorder, that is entropy in the system. In biologic systems, this means a great deal of energy is lost as metabolic heat when the organisms from one tropic level consume the next level. Now, the measurement of the energy transfer efficiency between two successive tropic levels is termed the tropic level transfer efficiency. Another main parameter that is important in characterizing energy flow within an ecosystem is the net production efficiency. That is, net production efficiency allows ecologists to quantify how efficiently organisms of a particular tropic level incorporate the energy they receive into biomass. This was all about today's topic. Hope you have enjoyed it well. Thank you for watching.